Hello everybody. Life can be challenging sometimes. We all have our ups and downs. Some people might think that other people live in paradise and uh, maybe they do. Don't know. I've got a boat full of teenagers at the moment. Still skint. Been skint all my life. Harry going on about safety online and all that is just more suppressing of freedom of speech. I don't know where he's coming from. Well, anyway, <clears throat> I bought this old knacker and it's a knacker. It really is. I'm going to stand on my dodgy old chairs and show you what a knacker it is. My, my super yacht, the boat that uh, I bought was uh, commissioned by the Carlsberg family for holidays on the Norwegian fjords. I know the Carlsbergs, they're Danish, aren't they? But the Norwegian fjords were the, uh, well, they're, they're, that's where they, I suppose, wanted to go on holiday. Last place, I'm sorry to Norwegian people. I'm sure it's beautiful, but it's very expensive. My dad did a cruise there. Anyway, I bought this old knacker. I bought it off a, a dodgy geezer in uh, Gibraltar. This, this, this boat, right? Well, I won't show you all of it. I won't bore the tits off you on that. But uh, I bought it um, in 2007 of a fella in Jib. That was always our dream, to live in Jib. Of course, we were a lot younger then. And I thought, brilliant. I, I love Jib. My ambition was to move back to Jib. First time I went to Gibraltar was uh, when I was about 21. And I was deeply impressed with it. I thought it was marvellous. And then uh, I said to Graham, well, let's move to Jib. And of course, it's very expensive to own houses and flats and properties and stuff. So it's much cheaper to buy a boat. So we bought this old knacker. Five grand. Actually, the guy wanted 20 grand, but <laughs> uh, I said to him, oh, okay, can I fly out to Jib and can I stay on the boat and try it out and see what I think of it? And he said, yeah, no problem. I said, to be fair to you, I will pay you a hundred pounds just for the weekend for me to bring my, me and my husband and my kids out and we'll stay on the boat for the weekend and if we like the boat and we buy it take the hundred quid off the asking price and if we don't like it you keep the hundred quid no no problem he said that's a brilliant idea so we fly out to jib <laughs> and he met us and he showed us the boat and we, we, we moved on she's not a knacker actually i love her i love her uh, <laughs> anyway first night we stayed there and I'm going back a while I've always been a feisty character but I, I wasn't as feisty then um, the first night we stayed on the boat woke up at about 2.30 in the morning with a bald pirate who was about six foot tall standing at the foot of our bed inside the boat he had a, a earring a big hoop just like a pirate and the first thing I knew was Graham sort of went like that hello hello wake up wake up you know for backup and I woke up bleary eyed and there's this bald dude standing there looking down on, to, on us <laughs> oh my god worst nightmare anyway I said to him oh hello who are you <laughs> and he said what the fuck are you doing on my boat and I thought oh my god maybe the guy who's selling the boat it's not his boat and we're asleep on the boat anyway turned out that was not the case um, I sat up and said oh <laughs> right okay and it wasn't until he said I just trod on one of the girls in the front cabin, 
breaking into the boat, I thought, oh my God, my, both my kids are in there. I was out of the bed like a, like a shot. And um, I raced past him down into the front cabin and said are you two all right my sammy and ben they were very little and they were like bleary eyed yeah yeah it's fine a man just cl climbed through the hatch <laughs> anyway uh i was in the kitchen then and very the galley and very much lower down than him and graham was in bed still in the cabin uh, sort of on his level so we had him surrounded and I was thinking of kitchen, knives, kettle, and now I've got him. And Graham was obviously, me, me and him are sort of psychic when we are in these kind of situations. So we think we've got this six foot baldy. And although he was over six foot, he had to stoop because on a boat, the ceiling's not that high. And uh, so Graham and I were very much, let's keep him calm, keep him calm, find out who the fuck this twat is i'm sorry anyone who watches these videos the lady the other day complained and said why does everyone these days have to say f this and f that i'm so sorry but this this really was one of these what the fuck kind of moments dude breaks in and you wake up there's a man at the foot of your bed skin bald pirate ring it turned out he didn't own the boat he was nothing to do with the boat and um I made, I said, well, I'll make you a cup of tea. I had all the carving knives out. I was like, oh my God, what the hell? And uh, the, the the guy I was buying the boat off, he wanted 20,000 pounds for this old knacker. Well, uh, uh, it turned out it was one of his mates who'd been dossing on the boat you know, occasionally. And he'd come to doss on the boat, trod on one of my kids and burst in on us. And I said to the fellow who was selling the boat, I don't want the boat. <laughs> I don't like what's going on. I think this is all very dodgy. And he said, I'll tell you what, you can have the boat for 10 grand. And then he said five. And we couldn't afford five even actually in those days. And he actually said, well, I tell you what, if you can't get finance from the bank, pay me off bit by bit. And that. so we did. And here we are. And now um, she is our pride and joy. And we've owned her since 2007. But yeah, my God, it oh, <laughs> horrifies me, actually, to this day. It's like a worst nightmare. Fly out to a foreign country, trusting someone, stay on a boat, and you've got a baldy there claiming... Oh, God. Anyway. Well, there you go. Green goes black. That's just a test of the sea. But so, won't be able to hear us over the wind. Uh, uh, follow on to the pirate story, because um, I'm really glad Graham was there and the kids. Because if I'd been on my own, I'd have thought I'd imagined it. What's What's your recollection? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember him standing there. What you doing in my house? That's right. He said house, what, didn't he? What you doing though. in my house? I no, thought, what you doing in my fucking oh, house? Not to alert. Not to alert. <laughs> And of course we were on holiday, we'd come over on the plane, so I wasn't tooled up, I didn't have any any handy weapons under the pillow. So um, I thought, here we go, looking around the room, thinking, what am I going to hit him with? And, uh, and Fiona chilled him out, made him a cup of tea. I thought, I've got hot water in my hands now, calm down, calm down. I thought, it's your house, is it? He said, well, the thing is, we... we, we, we um, well, it was when I said the name of the guy, I'm not going to say his name on this, but when I said... Oh, well, we know so-and-so, and he said it's his boat, and he's selling it. Um, straight away, he went, oh, my God, oh, you really you really are a prospective buyers. What have I done? And also, he thought that the people, the person he'd trodden on in the front cabin was a woman. He thought they were two girls in the front. When he realised they were two little kids, he was, oh, the guy was mortified. He was actually a really, really lovely, gentle giant. He was shaking, wasn't he? He had a lot of tattoos and a big earring and a bald head. Oh. He looked quite menacing. You sort of guy, you think, oh, I'm going to have to pick up a... He was a weightlifter. They both they, work. Yeah, yeah, they used yeah. to go down the gym and take... He's not the sort of guy you'd pick on. <laughs> but he wasn't a pirate. But I was think, saying to Graham, why, is, why have we called him a pirate all these years? And I remembered, because the, the kids would have freaked out a little bit. So they were into uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, big time. 
and so we just said oh he's a real life pirate and he just came to check that we're all happy on the boat and they were all like oh wow cool pirate you know stop him freaking sealed him out <laughs> and his chair his chair he oh said, yeah yeah I'm not he, he drank his cup of tea on the back day <laughs> and he was sat on his chair and he said I stole this chair it's mine yeah. he goes oh you can have it I thought, oh, great, he stole it from somewhere and it's, it's a gift. So we've still got it, actually. It's a good chair. It is. I'm not putting that on film either because I don't, I don't know exactly where he stole it from. I think he got it from one of the pubs in, probably. in the chip 20 years ago. They yeah. might recognise it. Yeah, they'll have changed the chairs by now, won't they? I don't know. They've all know. been broken over people's heads and things. It is horrifying, though, isn't it? When you wake up in the middle of the night. Well, you are woken it's, it's up. It's never right? happened to me before. It has to me. It, yes, that has happened. In the to army, me. in the no, army, maybe. No, but you're in, living in the barracks and things like that, but not, not in a. In no, a honestly, personal. It, it happened to me once when I was in my flat in Brighton, and my boyfriend at the time, in the summer, he was so hot, he'd insist on sleeping with the window wide open, and we were a basement flat on a very main road, Sackville Road, and uh, I had a nightmare. I woke up and there was again. He was a bald guy. And he was in a black and white stripy. It sounds like I'm making this up, but I'm not, I swear to God. Well, I thought it was a dream. Uh, I woke up and he had his hands out to grab. And I had two single beds and my ex-boyfriend was in the other bed. And the next morning, I said, oh, I had a weird dream last night. And he said, so did I. He said, I saw a bald guy uh, leaning over you with his hands. I said, oh, my God, that was obviously real. The guy must have climbed through the big open window. Can we please close the window at night? I mean, it's asking for it, isn't it? Isn't it? It is in Brighton. But so, yeah, that has happened to me before. <laughs> I hope it never happens again. Oh, my God. That's horrific, isn't it? She's all in bed. Kids. was in bed the other night, and I just reached across and put my hand on her shoulder, and she's like this. <laughs> and she went back to sleep. <laughs> oh, it's him. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, stress. Never mind the kids freaking out. I mean, my... my uh, my daughter, when she was about seven, told Benji, when he was uh, four or five, she said if he used the toilet on the boat, then the monster would suck him down and he wouldn't use the toilet for a little tinkle, you know? And you had to take him to the bloody shower block every five minutes. Every five minutes they go in their little tunnel. And he, he woke me up one morning and he said, Mum, Mum, look, Samantha's done a lovely tattoo on my head. It says superhero. And, um... I think this was the day after the pirates, and I looked at him and I said, no, it doesn't, you idiot. He says, I am a girl. <laughs> thank God it was only, that. oh, thank God it was only Byro. I remember that, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's enough of that then, isn't it? I just, I, I need a witness, you know. <laughs> a follow-up, just to clarify a few points. I'm still getting over it, bloody pirate on the boat. And, and it wasn't a dodgy geezer we bought the boat off. It's actually a really nice, respectable geezer in Gibraltar. I don't know why I said that on the last video. He is, isn't he? He's, well, I won't yeah, say, say who he is. I don't know if he wants to be on the internet. Anyway, see you later.